Now, really quickly, it's become very, very clear to me that the very best agents, and I'm talking about the really, really good ones, like GPT Pilot, GPT Engineer is really good as well, Devin, and then back in the day, there was also self-operating computer, really, really good frameworks or agent, whatever you want to call it. All these agents, they really seem to use pretty much the exact same prompts to achieve these cutting edge results that they do. And even more so than the frameworks that are built around these agents, so like the tools and systems that you give them, these prompting techniques seem to really push the models that are used in these different agents to the very edge and allow these agents to perform much much better now in this video what i'll do is i'll break this down for you we'll take a look at what these prompting techniques are why they enable these agents to be as good as they are and exactly how you can implement them if you're working on your own agent so welcome to prompt engineering for unbeatable ai agents now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look through all these prompting techniques and i'll show you in a really practical manner how these techniques are used using one of the really good new projects that's kind of shocked me recently with these agent projects and this is the Claude engineer so you must have heard of this this is a project that's built on Claude 3.5 Sonnet it's a really good agent it can do quite a few things and guess what it uses pretty much all these prompting techniques so what I've done is I've pulled out their entire system prompt and I put it in Microsoft Word and we're going to use this as an example to really push the prompts that I'm talking about and show you exactly how you can use these in practical projects so the very first technique we're going to take a look at is iterative refinement prompting now this is actually really interesting and this is one that became evident to me initially when we took a look at the devin project how this agent instead of trying to solve the entire problem all at once it kind of breaks it down into a step-by-step -step process where it can work on one single task at a time and walk through the entire process step by step and solve one particular problem at a go there's a lot of ways to do this but i just want to point out that the very best technique for doing this is actually not what you would initially think now if we take a look at the Claude engineer project it does do this over here so if i just search for auto mod it does do this using a technique called auto mod so what the prompt over here is telling it to do is it's telling it to set clear achievable goals for yourself based on the user's request walk through these goals one by one using the available tools needed and then the rest of this stuff here doesn't really involve the iterative refinement of the work that it's doing but these two prompts over here they kind of let the model know that it should walk step by step towards the goal that it's doing now Claude engineer does a pretty good job at this except there's a little bit of a problem so the issue with this is that when you're working with iterative refinement sometimes you have goals that have numerous numerous tasks if you only have about 10 tasks that's just fine but then if you have 100 tasks what's going to happen is that the initial plan that the model did it's going to run out of the token space of the model and these models they do have very large token spaces nowadays but they're still not yet large enough to manage tasks that have like a hundred steps of refinement within the entire process and this is where using a to-do list approach becomes really really useful again we saw this with Devin it does have a planner involved and the plan is really really important because it allows it to plan through this step step by step and what you can do is you can feed this model at every response you can feed it the plan and allow it to modify the plan to tick off certain tasks that are done and the model will be able to keep track of that and know where it is at that specific step without needing to have stored that within its context memory now if you're watching this video you're definitely interested in building AI agents and if you've sort of had a hard time knowing where or how to get started I'd like to let you know that at AIA we've sort of been building these AI agents for both enterprise and individual solutions so if you're interested in building an agentic app and sort of publishing it or just interested in building a solution that you can use for yourself be sure to head over to our website check out our services get in touch and i'm pretty sure we'll be able to help you out with that let's go ahead and continue with the video now for some of the agents that we've built internally at aia some of them don't actually need this particular functionality but there are some agents that work on really really long tasks and some of these need this kind of stuff so this is a little bit of a leakage of some of the internal projects that we're working on but one of the things that i have is i have a multi-agent that involves a so-called agent planner let's just call it that the agent planner has the ability to do certain functions that help the entire agent deal with the plans that it has so you can see here what i'm doing is i'm running through the functions that it has it has a function to initialize a plan and it has a bunch of other functions so create a to-do list item add a to-do list item delete a to-do list item mark an item as done and this is sort of the planner agent within a multi-agent system and then that multi-agent system sort of has other execution agents and those agents can sort of walk through the plan step by step to make sure they get the tasks done while the planner agent is actually in the background managing the plan and this sort of planning technique is really the more powerful technique is sort of the better way to deal with this stuff because then what you can do is you can leave planning to an entire ai model that's sort of doing that on its own and then you leave the actual execution of tasks to a whole other ai agent and these two can sort of work together to execute the tasks that you want them to execute really really well now with that all the way the next really powerful prompt that i've discovered is self-reflection 
one prompt. Now, this one here, this was a big deal initially in the self-operating computer when it came out. The really cool thing about the self-operating computer is that yes, it could execute tasks step by step on your computer, sort of click through everything and all that. But then the really important thing that I kind of noticed and this kind of blew my mind initially when I looked at self-operating computer was that once it was done executing a specific task, what it could do is that it could then look at your computer screen and decide whether it had done what you wanted it to do properly. And if it hadn't done it properly, it would sort of go back step by step and try to get you to the point where you want to get right from where it left off initially. This is done using some very, very simple prompting technique. It's so powerful. The prompting technique is so simple and yet it produces some of the most powerful results that you would ever see. And this is the self-reflection prompt. Here's a very simple example of it. So once you've finished the described task, evaluate the outcome and see if it fully matches the user's goal as described in the original prompt. And that's perfect. Now, of course, what this prompt does is it sort of encourages the model to review its output properly, identify any gaps, and then make necessary connections or enhancements. There is a little bit of a caveat with this particular prompt because one of the most important things about agents is that they need to know when they are done with the specific task. Usually they just assume that they're done, but if you give an agent the ability to sort of review its work, sometimes it can have a very hard time deciding that it's actually done. And what you need to make sure you're doing is you need to make sure that you're setting clear goals for your self-reflection. So some really clear goals is are all the requirements that the user initially had, are they all done? And then have all items within the to-do list, have they all been ticked off? If these two things are not yet satisfied, then there is a very high chance that the model should sort of go back, review its work, and then sort of try to actually get these things done because they're clearly not yet done. But if you give the model vague reflection prompts, what the model is going to do usually, not the very smartest models nowadays, but even those are not prompt to this problem, is that usually what they'll do is they'll just sort of get into a feedback loop where they do a piece of work, feel like they're not yet done, and then try to do it again, and then feel like they're not yet done, and then try to do it again. And of course, that's a terrible thing because that means the model will never finalize with the work that it's doing and conclude that it's done. It will just keep on going. And what's really important to note is that even in Claude Engineer, this was a very common problem. So one of the things that they did was that at this point, towards the very end of the prompt, one of the things that they tell the model to do is that once it feels that it's done with pretty much every single task, it should just say auto mode complete within the response. And this will allow it to exit the loop. Obviously, they have some internal code within this particular agent that's detecting the presence of this text within a certain response and then cutting off the loop if that's the case. Finally, we have one of the more difficult prompts to understand, and this is the identity prompt. This one over here is a little bit tricky, but it's actually really, really powerful. I've used this a lot in some of the more advanced agents that I've been trying to build. And what I've noticed is that this prompt is really, really powerful because of the amount of token space that it saves you. So one of the things that you need to keep in mind is that sometimes when you're trying to describe the behavior that you want from a specific agent, you can sometimes just describe that behavior in terms of an identity. You can see here one of the prompts that I've given this agent is I've just said, you are proficient in Turkish legal matter. So there's a lot of things that I could have used to sort of describe this behavior. I could have said something like you're able to confidently give legal advice. Then you can give detailed advice and try to meet the definition proficient. And then I could have said something like present your ideas in a clear, direct, concise manner without being uncertain like ChatGPT tends to. But all I've done is I've just told you that it is proficient in Turkish legal matter. And this just summarizes everything that I'm trying to say in just a single prompt. And it makes this really, really short. Now, what I want to do is I, I just want to drive this idea home. Now, if you take a look at most agents, what you'll notice is that they start off with this at the beginning. So for example, in Claude Engineer, they just say, well, you are Claude, an AI assistant that's powered by Claude's three sonnet model, and you are an exceptional software developer. Now, the more important thing is this part over here, where it says you are an exceptional software developer with vast knowledge across multiple programming languages, frameworks, and best practices. And this is clearly an identity prompt. Now, the question is, when do you use this? When do you actually bring these prompts into the idea? And here's the key. So for example, take a look at this prompt. You can sort of take a while to read through it. Basically, all I'm saying is that the model should try to get as much information from the user to help them with their task. And in addition to that, the model should not engage in any unrelated conversation with the user because we wanted this model to be really specific with what it can discuss with the user. This particular prompt, this one over here, contains 495 characters and it takes up 101 tokens. But because these concepts within the prompt are actually subjective concepts, what I can do is I can summarize this into an identity prompt. So this is the identity prompt that I've come up with. It's a significantly shorter prompt. It's not significantly shorter. The previous one was 495. This one's actually 308. But take a look at the token space, right? This new prompt is taking up half of the previous token space within the previous prompt. And it's saving us a significant amount of token space, but still conveying the exact same ideas. And what I noticed is that this identity prompt actually produces significantly better results than the previous prompt because it allows the model to be freer in the way that it decides to follow my instructions. And it actually takes up significantly less token space than the previous 
press prompt and that's pretty much it now these prompting techniques is sort of just the beginning of pretty much the entire layout of what we could take a look at but what i've realized is that these are the most active prompts in pretty much all agent systems now be sure to let me know if there are any other prompts that you've sort of used to build your own agents in the comment section and i'll be super glad to sort of hang out with you guys in there if you've liked this video be sure to hit the subscribe button and i will catch you guys in the next video peace out